This collection of letters and symbols represents centuries of intellectual effort. A gift from the past, this formula derives the period of a pendulum and interestingly gives us a method for measuring acceleration due to gravity, something you can do with simple equipment at home. The first incarnation of this formula appears to have formed in the mind of Galileo. Apparently the 17th century philosopher was watching a chandelier swinging in a church. He noticed something unexpected about the motion of this pendulum. It didn't seem to matter how far this chandelier swung, the time or period for each swing was the same. Setting up an experiment, he confirmed that a pendulum maintains the same period, independent of the size of the swing. These two pendulums have identical mass and length. Releasing them at the same moment with different displacements, it is apparent that they swing with the same period, independent of the size of swing. This is true for small displacements. He also discovered that the weight of the pendulum's bob does not affect the period of the swing. In this example, the larger pendulum bob is much heavier than the small one, but the pendulums have the same length as measured to the center of the bob. They swing with the same period. Experimenting further, Galileo discovered that the period of a pendulum is proportional to the square root of its length. Short pendulums swing exponentially faster than long ones. These observations resulted in the first incarnation of the pendulum formula. The letter T in the formula is actually the Greek letter tau. Tau is used in physics to denote period, an interval of time. In this case, the time for one complete oscillation of a pendulum. This formula states that the period of a pendulum, tau, varies with the square root of the length of the pendulum. With a growing understanding of the effect of gravity on a pendulum's period, this formula was modified to include gravity. Evolving to this final version. This important formula is attributed to the 17th century Dutch scientist Christian Huygens. This formula states that the period of a pendulum equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. L represents the length of the pendulum in meters and G is acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. Here's how to use this formula. The length of a pendulum is the distance from the pivot point to the center of the bob. This pendulum is 0.86 meters long. To calculate its period, we substitute into the formula like this. Solving for tau, we get a period of 1.86 seconds. Let's actually measure the period of this pendulum. We will record the time for the pendulum to complete 10 full swings. I release the pendulum and start a timer. Elapsed time for 10 swings is 18.58 seconds. Dividing by 10 and rounding to two decimals, we get 1.86 seconds per swing, equal to the predicted value. The formula is confirmed. The period of any pendulum can be determined using this equation. We are all familiar with the pendulum and the role it has played in the evolution of clocks. What you may not be familiar with is the role pendulums have played in mapping the Earth's gravitational field. Apparently g, acceleration due to gravity, can vary with location. The Earth's motion and equatorial bulge are a couple of the factors affecting the gravitational field. To measure acceleration due to gravity in your neighborhood, it is simply a matter of setting up a pendulum, measuring its length and period, then using the pendulum formula to determine g. This is the formula rearranged to solve for g. To solve this equation, we need to determine values for l and tau, length and period. I'll set up a pendulum, measure its length, and use a timer to determine its period. 
I'm using a long pendulum for this demonstration. It's suspended from the ceiling of my workshop. The bob is an unusual shape. I estimated the location of its center of mass by balancing it on its side. The distance from the center of mass of the bob to the pivot point at the ceiling is 3.63 meters. I'll use this timer to determine the interval for 10 complete swings. A long pendulum like this has a large period. This helps when timing. Any small errors aren't as significant. Our timer shows 38.18 seconds for 10 complete swings. Dividing by 10 and rounding, we get a period of 3.82 seconds for this 3.63 meter pendulum. Substituting 3.63 for length and 3.82 for period into the formula, we can solve for g, acceleration due to gravity. Working through the numbers gives us an answer of 9.82 meters per second squared. Our results are very close to the standard or average value of 9.81. You can use this method to determine acceleration due to gravity in your neighborhood. A good topic for a science fair project. The pendulum also played an important role in the evolution of the metric system. Our video, The Pendulum and Galileo, tells this story. For more science and technology videos, visit our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.